Well, we can cross now live to speak to the actor Hugh Grant. He's in Westminster. He's been campaigning on this issue of phone hacking, of course, for some time. Uh, he joins me now. Good afternoon to you, Hugh Grant. Hello. Uh, what do you make of what you've heard in the House of Commons today? Earlier, uh, the Prime Minister David Cameron described uh, the use of phone hacking at the News of the World as absolutely disgusting, and he's called for not one, but possibly two public inquiries. What's your response to that? Yeah, well, I managed to miss the, de the debate and what the Prime Minister said, but I've just been filled in. Um, seems to me that that sounds right. Uh, that's exactly why we're standing on this green now, to kick off a campaign for um, a full public inquiry. So we just need to make sure that that really is full, public, immediate, and uh, with no uh, funny stuff. Because, you know, we all know that the Prime Minister and has been very much in bed with the Murdoch organisation uh, a, to get elected, and B, since election, you know, to the point of even having um, their, their man at the heart of Downing Street, Andy Coulson. So uh, it's, this is a very uncomfortable position for him. And um, I would think that his main motive, or perhaps I should say his orders from Murdoch at this point, would be to try to uh, kick the whole thing into the long grass. And so maybe he's just announcing an inquiry and thinking, oh, well, you know, in, the, in the future, and hopefully some big news event will come along and take the heat off this. So you wanted to start now, even though we've heard during the course of the debate some concerns about uh, a public inquiry going alongside a police investigation. Shouldn't the police investigation be completed before that inquiry starts? The, pr the problem with the police investigation, uh, well, there's two problems. One is, uh, originally, the, the police were not good on this, as we all know. They dragged their feet. Uh, there's talk of money having changed hands between News International and, and the Metropolitan Police. And there's all kinds of... Um, synergies going on between those two organizations that make most people very uncomfortable. It is true that there's a new uh, uh, investigation at the Met. They're new policemen. They've been to see me uh, asking me to be a witness in this, in this uh, case, and I'm very happy to help them. But uh, I, I cannot put all my faith in the Metropolitan Police, and I, and I can't, uh, I wouldn't also, because I think they're going to uncover individual crimes for sure. Uh, certain people will go to prison for sure. But we need to, uh, um, an inquiry that uncovers all the practices and indeed the culture, not just of the news of the world, but of all tabloid journalism in this country. Because what we're going to find out in the next uh, weeks and months is that this wasn't just the news of the world. I almost feel sorry for them in that um, they're taking the rap for uh, the malpractices of the entire industry. So how widely do you think this goes? Well, according to uh, Paul McMullen, the ex-News of the World features editor, who I interviewed surreptitiously, uh, and uh, I published the article in the New Statesman. Uh, he says it was every um, tabloid on Fleet Street were enthusiastic phone hackers, um, going right up to the ones with the highest moral standards, like the Daily Mail. Do you think that's still the case now? Well, according to him, the Daily Mail stopped uh, about five years ago and have been squeaky clean ever since. But I'd be very surprised if some of the other red tops hadn't still been at it since then. And, you know, phone hacking is just one aspect of it. There's also... Uh, blagging people's phone details, bank details, uh, out of uh, Vodafone or whoever it might be, or paying off operatives in hospitals to get people's medical records. You know, only the other day I ended up in hospital in the middle of the night and it was in the sun the next day. And uh, so there's no, there's no question that these tactics are widespread in the tabloid press. I have no quarrel with the broadsheets. Uh, and, um, uh, and ongoing. Well, clearly we haven't got uh, the other tabloids here to ask them to defend themselves. But let's talk about the original police inquiry as well. As you say, there were clearly problems with that. Why do you think that went wrong? Um, <clears throat> well, again, according to Paul McMullen, this ex-features uh, editor at the News of the World, um, there has always been a cosy relationship between the police and the, and the uh, tabloid press. Um, the tabloid press are grateful for uh, tip-offs. Uh, and vice versa, and to the extent where, on a regular basis, policemen uh, would be given envelopes with cash. And um, that doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right that, uh, I think it's, uh, that a, you know, a senior officer at the Metropolitan Police um, was frequently lunching with executives at News International, uh, or that he ended up writing uh, for The Times. Um, it's, uh, it's extremely fishy, their relationship. So how a broad a shake-up do you think is needed of journalism in this country? You're saying that there's too cosy a relationship between politicians and some journalists, too cosy a relationship between the police and some journalists. How dramatic do you think the changes need to be? 
I, have to, I think they have to be incredibly dramatic. Um, I think that uh, the two places to start are, one, people have to um, vote with their wallets. I mean, let's start with the news of the world. You know, people should ask themselves if they want to buy the news of the world on Sunday. And advertisers need to ask themselves if they want to advertise in the news of the world. Already Ford has said they won't do that. And I've seen on the Internet a massive wave of affection and support for Ford for having the spine to do that. So I think that's one way. And the other way is through a big uh, public inquiry like this. And my personal hope is that the end result would be the setting up of a really strong watchdog, um, such as we have for television, we have Ofcom, we have, uh, um, what's the name of that one for the advertising? You know, they're, they're pretty brutal. I used to be in advertising. I know how strong they are. And it's always seemed to me extraordinary that there isn't one for tabloid journalism and that uh, the tabloids have really been allowed to live above the law for so long because of their incredible power to make or break politicians and because of their incredible um, power to make or break individuals and, and they will use that power. They're, they're very ruthless. Do you accept though that there's a danger of throwing the baby out with the bathwater and it's worth acknowledging that uh, while clearly many of the allegations are deeply unsavoury that have been made against tabloids at the moment, yeah. there are some investigations that really do throw useful light on, on criminal activities and underhand uh, goings on that need to be exposed and if, if, we, if we clamp down too hard that could stop? Well, I think we can largely rely on proper journalists and the broadsheets and television and radio to do that job. There have perhaps been the occasional um, good apple in the bad apple uh, vat that is tabloid uh, journalism. But I'm, um, I'm not overly worried uh, about throwing out those few good apples because they can migrate to the good papers. Or we can bring back good popular journalism. It used to exist. You know, you think of the, the Daily Mirror. It was, used to be a great crusading paper um, taking up the cause of um, the underprivileged and now it's just become another, you know, what's Jordan done to her breasts paper, and I think that's sad. Okay, Hugh Grant, we appreciate your time. Thanks for talking to us here sure. this afternoon. Okay. Uh, and I think we can show you some of the scenes that have been going on behind uh, Hugh Grant there at Westminster, some of the protests that are going on while that emergency debate is underway inside uh, the House of Commons on this issue of phone hacking.